on this one, uh, we need for this differential equation, we need to determine the regions of the xy plane where the solutions exist. Where do you think here the solutions exist? So that's the first part of the question. It seems to me for all xy solutions exist, because there's no restrictions on this differential equation. So solutions exist for all xy. Yeah? Now for part two, we need to say where they exist and are unique according to the existence and uniqueness theorem. So for this one, we can take our f to be 2x to the 2 thirds y and find the partial with respect to y, yeah? So that becomes just 2x to the 2 thirds. Uh, where are those continuous? Those are continuous for all x, y. Therefore, according to the existence and For all x, y. No? Since these are continuous for all x, y. That's what the theorem is. So you can see it's fairly straightforward. Should we try B? X, Y to the minus two thirds. So we could rewrite this as x over y to the two thirds. Right. So so you so, right. So for all x, y, except possibly for possibly for y equals zero. Can you integrate this time? No, you don't have to. He's just saying determine the regions where solutions exist. We've answered, and then he said, according to the existence and uniqueness theorem, you don't have to verify. Yeah. Uh, do they ex where are where do they exist, and where are they unique? So for this, we can call f our x over y to the two thirds, and we can find partial f partial y, yeah, which um, we differentiate with respect to y. So we get minus two thirds. You hold x fixed. Yeah. You do that. 
So y minus 2 thirds minus 1 minus x minus 5 thirds. So that means df over dy. Um, elevator this, put it in an elevator and bring it down. Yeah. yeah. Uh, at a cost of a negative, um, you know, switching the um, sign of the exponent. Yeah. So you get y to the 5 thirds. Therefore, according to the uniqueness existence and uniqueness theorem, uh, solutions um, exist and are unique uh, for all x, y, except possibly y equals 0, because they're not continuous to y equals 0. And the reason I say possibly is because the existence and uniqueness theorem is sufficient but not necessary. Right. Um, yeah. Right. So you, you could you you could get situations where it's not continuous, and yet it has a unique solution at a given initial value. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So this was part C. Oh, actually, wait, yeah, I missed it. Uh, here it says, for each of the above parts, solve the differential equation subject. Oh, I didn't read this because it comes after. Subject to the initial conditions y0 equals 0 and determine whether the solution you calculate crosses the line y equals 0. Yeah, so we would have had to integrate that. I, I, did, I didn't see this part because yeah, it's below the question. Uh, yeah, I know. You should just put it above, like, with the question. I think, like, a lot of this stuff, like, the book, like, he wrote part of it, then he sent it off to the, uh, like, the other guy that wrote it, wrote his part, and they just, like, shoved it together and didn't really, like, proofread it. Oh, that's what happened. Okay, well, uh, oh, yeah, for the first one I showed you, Um, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's solve uh, B, I guess. So back to B. So back to B. So dy. Absolutely. Over y equals two x to the two thirds dx. And now you can integrate both sides. And you'd get ln y because the integral of dy over y is just ln y. And, and what this is you, you add one here, so you get Two thirds plus one is um, five thirds multiplied by divided by five thirds and multiplied by three fifths. That's what it's saying. So if you exponenti exponentiate that, so to speak, expunge it, <laughs> you'd get y equals e uh, to the um, 
6 over 5 x to the 5 thirds times c. Okay. Um, so what uh, we, we, we originally said about B, let's go back to B. We said that solutions exist everywhere, but then we said they're, uh, they're also continuous and exist everywhere, yeah? So, so yeah, uh, this definitely determine whether the solution crosses the line y equals zero. Well, not really. It doesn't cross the line y equals zero, does it? Well, wait. Yeah, it does. Uh, the line y equals zero is the x-axis. So. Um, right? Yeah, can. No, no, because we have an asymptote. Oh, right, right, right. And right. clearly you can't yeah. because uh, y cannot be zero because you have an ln. Yeah? So this graph looks something like it's a growth graph. So it looks something like this. So no. does not cross y equals 0. You understand? Because this can never be zero. Yeah, so when it not exist, it's zero. Or it can't be negative. Um, yeah, but, you know, the existence and uniqueness theorem did not say that. Yeah, well, the existence of, does that just mean that the derivative is continuous? Right. The point is, you just don't have any solutions. Uh, you're not going to get any initial value problems for anything below the x axis. Yeah. Well, the function wouldn't exist um, without it. Without some shift, it wouldn't, ex it wouldn't exist. It, it, would, it would never cross zero. Right. That's the idea. And so the existence and uniqueness theorem, that means that, is that, would that, does that mean that you just go by the, it's continuous? Yeah. Whereas for part C, if you solve part C, we would get dy over, or dy times y to the two thirds. equals x dx. Yeah? And then you can integrate both sides here. And you would get y uh, to the 5 thirds equals x squared over 2 plus c raised to the 3 fifths. And you would get x squared over 2 plus c raised to the 3 fifths. Now, how does this graph look like raised to the 3 fifths? Could this be negative? Definitely. Could you cross the axis here? Well, yeah, you could. You could, can't you? Yeah, because there's a c. So you can just, well, you 
Uh, yeah. No. Um, this is raised to the three fifths. Yeah, you could definitely cross the axis here, because you can possibly have. So, so yeah. So this is. Uh, so this solution. crosses y equals 0. And what did we say about the uniqueness? We said um, we said for part C it's everywhere except y equals 0 not continuous. And we said that uh, it's, uh, they're not unique except at y equals 0. However, when we solve this, you could see that it is unique. Well, no, no, I shouldn't say it's unique. Wait, because uh, uh, because actually if uh, for x equals minus 1 and x equals 1, you are getting the same exact solution. Yeah. This is symmetric about the y. So, so yeah, so, so, um, so not unique necessarily. Right. Um, because for minus 1, f of minus 1, you'd have the same exact solution as 1 and f of 1. Yeah. I should call this big f of 1, not small, because we call this f a small one. F. So f being the solution of the equation, the y, or y of 1, and y of minus 1. Um, so you have symmetry here, so this graph might look something like this. Right. Yeah. Um, Basically, you're shifted in whatever C value. Yeah. You could shift it down, you could shift it up. If you shift it up, you don't cross y equals 0. If you shift it down, you do. But this is basically the idea. So here, um, um, yeah, at y equals 0, you can see that you get two different values for x. So it's not a unique solution as predicted by the, by the theorem. Right. Yeah, it exists, but it's not unique. Yeah. 